I think um, one of the most compelling bits, uh, pieces on, in that is actually relatively early in the book, where we talk about two people, Ben Barris and Joan Roughgarden, um, both of you have um, rather interesting experiences from having transitioned from, uh, for Ben, it was from female to male, and for Joan, the other way around. And they both ended up perceiving the world in a rather different way. Now, I think it, it, they pose a good answer to the question, is there actually an authority gap? Uh, you know, is Marianne just writing a book for the sake of writing a book at this point in time? Exactly. I should, first of all, tell you what the authority gap is. I'm sure you all guess, but it's, it's the fact that we are just still more reluctant to accord authority to women than to men. We basically take men more seriously than women. We assume they know what they're talking about until they prove otherwise. And for women, it's the other way around. And as a result, women get underestimated, ignored, their views ignored, talked over, interrupted, their expertise is challenged more. Uh, and they're basically undermined or mandermined, as, uh, as I call it. Um, and so I, I thought this, I came across this story of these two Stanford professors who each transitioned in middle age in the opposite direction. They didn't even know each other at the time. It was the dean who brought them together because she knew they were both going through similar um, experiences. So Ben Barris, when he began living as a man, said he was a, he was a neuroscientist. He was middle-aged. And he said, I've had the thought a thousand times, I'm just taken more seriously now. And he said, the same damn work is taken more seriously. And someone was overheard at the back of one of his seminars who didn't know his history saying, oh, Ben Barris gave such a great seminar, but then his work's so much better than his sister's. <laughs> Joan Roughgarden transitioned in the opposite direction. She, when she was living as a man, had been on the university Senate committee. She'd been hugely respected. Her pay was in the top 10% of her cohort. When she became, when she started living as a woman, suddenly her relative pay dropped. She found it much harder to get grants. She lost her seat on the university Senate committee. She said, I couldn't finish a sentence without being interrupted by a man at meetings. And to start with, she said, well, hey, you know, uh, if women are discriminated against, then I'm just gonna, you know, I'm now, I'm, now I'm living as a woman, I'm just jolly well gonna join in. And then she said, well, the novelty and thrill of that has worn off, I can tell you. <laughs> Um, and what I loved about these two stories, and it's not just those two, because there have actually been academic studies of much broader groups of trans people, particularly trans men, and ha they've had exactly the same experience. They're just respected more, they do better in their careers, the trans men and the trans women have the opposite. But what I found so interesting is that this is actually a very scientific way of proving the case that there is this authority gap, because Normally it's really hard if you're a woman, you know, and you say, oh, they're just being sexist or my male colleague is doing better than me and it's not fair. And people will just say, well, maybe he's better than you. But actually these, this is exactly the same person with the same ability, intelligence, experience, personality um, and character. And they're being treated differently because the one variable that matters has been isolated and that's what's changed. 